My father was a trainer um, for 36, 37 years. He started training in Lambourne. Um, then he moved to Newmarket, where I was born. Um, and he finished in Midland, um, which is where I've lived for probably 19, 20 years now. Um, and he trained in several yards around, around Midland. Uh, and I probably started riding in amateur races when I was 17 years old. Uh, while I was still at school and then I was very fortunate to get on a scholarship course called the Dali Flying Start. Shane Mohammed had been very generous, 12 students. Um, we worked in England, Ireland, uh, America, Australia and Dubai. Um, my focus was obviously on the training side of things but it was primarily focused on the breeding side. Um, I did get opportunities to spend time with trainers in all of those countries. Um, I worked for Owen Harty in America in Santa Anita. I worked uh, for David Hayes in Australia and I worked for Godolphin in Dubai itself. Um, so it was a fantastic um, it was a bit of a stop start tour of the world and the racing industry around the world. Um, you know two years can't cover everything but it was a great experience. America was very different to how we train here. Australia is similar uh, in, in, its, in its training uh, to here. Unfortunately, the prize money is a lot better in Australia. Um, but it, uh, and Dubai is, is, is a slightly separate entity. Dubai is Dubai, Arab-based focused, um, and it's very military run. Obviously, it's a country where it's, it's not always natural for for, for thoroughbreds to race during the day, but you know, the Dubai World Cup is a fantastic uh, concept by Sheikh Mohammed and it's been, a, it's been a big boost to the racing industry. I was very for fortunate enough to meet him um, in the Burj Al Arab, which is the, the, the sale hotel. He took us all up for lunch um, and he's a very, very down to earth guy um, and it's his, his passion is, is, is racehorses and that's where that's where Dubai, you know, they relied on their on the Arab horses to get them around, and they they are where they are because of the horse. And he's he's trying to give back as much as he can. And we've got a fantastic gallops. We've got mile and a half grass gallops. We've got mile and a half wood chip gallops. We've got poly track gallops. We've got uh, fantastic schooling facilities and. Um, it, it, it does cater for, for every every, um, every type of racehorse, you know, be it a, a five furlong two year old or a, or a three mile chaser. You know, we've won um, Midlands had Royal Ascot two year old winners, um, and it's had um, it's had Gold Cup winners and uh, Grand National winners. So it's um, it's it really does cover every aspect. The High Moor is a it's a testing gallop that only suits horses when they're at a certain stage of fitness. Um, you, you know, you don't start off with a, a young horse or a horse that's just come back into training. They don't canter around the high moor. Uh, you know, they need to be down on the low moor training down there. So, um, and I, I'm, I'm a, quite a distance from the high moor, but I only want to send a horse there that I need to get particularly fit or whatever. Uh, and, and the journey up to the high moor and the journey back from the high moor is a positive. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a long trek and the longer the horse stays out of its box, uh, you, the better. Currently we're on 26 winners, um, which is um, 26 winners in, in a year and a half is, is, is acceptable. It, it might, be, might be more by the time viewers watch the DVD. Hopefully it is more by the time viewers watch this DVD. By a length and a half now, running second is Jack Smurge, Azura DiCaprio now takes second over a furlong out and he's taking dead aim at the leader. Elin Daly with Azura DiCaprio moving up alongside. Azura DiCaprio hits the front inside the final furlong, edging towards the stand side. Azura DiCaprio, Elin Daly rallying, but Azura DiCaprio held on. 
trained a winner for, for, for JP McManus, which is fantastic. Uh, AP rode him. Flights they come. Claude Carter in front, shaken up. A stone's throw now, ranging up to challenge, rather nursed into it by AP. And a stone's throw now comes up sides Claude Carter. Draw towards the final fence. A stone's throw over safely, and now extending the lead from Claude Carter. The taste of paradise, a remote third, and then Holly's favourite. It's AP again, and a stone's throw is drawing clear. He travelled well, and he put it to bed quite readily. When my father was training um, in the last three or four years, um, we had, we've, we've had Cheltenham winners. Um, he's had a Group 1 winner in France. Um, we've had, I mean, he's done it all. He's had a winner at every racetrack in the country, um, which, apart from Foss Lass, that suddenly appeared, um, I don't think anyone's ever done. Um, so that's 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 great. But he, I mean, he's... he's uh, if I can get anywhere near to to the amount of winners or the success that he's had over 30, 36, 37 years, I'll be I'll be very happy. Yeah, well, I think horses owners should, should certainly have a look and come come to Midland to have a look because um, there's all sorts of factors. Um, the, the the biggest factor is, is the facilities are great in Midland. Um, it's it is a fantastic place to train a racehorse. Um, there's no rush to train the racehorses in Middleham. Um, it's it's uh, a place that can train winners all year round. Uh, the facilities will, will 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 stand training all year round. Um, the other factor is it, it's a lovely place to train and and to see a racehorse being trained. Um, the 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 scenery, the the views. On Midland Moor, absolutely stunning. Um, and, and owners, that's the first thing they always say when they when they have a racehorse <coughs> gallop on the moor. Is that, that you know they're amazed by by the, the scenery. Um, obviously, the times where they are, you have to move into thinking about costs, etc. Um, and it is more economical. Certainly, the statistics. Uh, it's a more economical place to train. Uh, certainly, for my training fees. Obviously, I don't know. Every, what every trainer in Midlands training fees are, but our training fees are very competitive and we're able to maintain those training fees when they're not going to go up. Um, and it's, you know, you need to make it affordable. Um, and luckily around Midlands there are probably 15 race courses within, you know, uh, within you know, an hour and a half, uh, which, which is with the price of diesel, etc. Uh, it's, it does keep the costs down, and you can go to York. Uh, they're not just, you know, they're not not they're not small race courses. You've got York and Doncaster and all those places within reach. Um, if you've got a horse good enough to go there.